Thank you. Once upon a time, um, oh. I was a massage girl. Um, the the sort of technical internet way of putting it is um, I did FBSM, full body sensual massage, which is sort of a fancy way for saying that I did rub and tugs. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's pretty much what I did. Um, I um, gave massages with a hand job ending. Um, that's how I put myself through school. Um, very noble cause, in my opinion. Um, and, you know, I, I was maybe not that great at this, but, but it worked. And um, I didn't really feel like there was a, a much of a spiritual connection to what I did. You know, it was, it was basically like rub, tug, money. Yay. <laughs> but occasionally I would make a connection with a client, and these guys became my regulars. So I had a small number of regulars, but... Over time, I sort of developed interesting relationships with them, and I'm going to tell you a story about one of my regulars tonight. So um, this guy, his name was Joe, uh, he was a firefighter, and he was a very, very large man, so he sort of filled up the door when, whenever you came into the studio that I was working out of. And um, for, you know, for all his hugeness, he was really kind of soft-spoken, um, very relaxed, very nice and very quiet, um, and, you know, but he was also large all over. And he's one of those guys who has a big cock, but you never really know it because he could never get it fully hard. And really, there, there are two kinds of clients. When you, when you have clients who can't get it up, they, they react in two different ways. One is that they get angry and frustrated, and they, you really get the sense that they want to get their money's worth. That's not so good. The other kind of client who can't get a hard on um, understands that actually... An erection is maybe not the most important thing in the world, and that there's lots of other things you can do sexually to be satisfied and all that stuff. Joe, thankfully, was the second one. That's why he was a regular. So as I got to know people like Joe and other regular clients, um, sometimes they would, they would start to reveal more and more to me as time went on. And they do this in sort of coy ways. And this is kind of one of the things about the fact that the sex industry in the United States is illegal, that you have to be sort of coy about what you're talking about. You can't say explicitly what sex act you will do for what amount of money. So um, I would have guys say, say very coy things like, I always want to know what it was like for a woman, which is basically a euphemism for would you please fuck me in the ass. <laughs> so Joe started dropping hints like that. And, you know, I listened to him, and I was like, I, I know exactly where this conversation's going. <laughs> and then, one day, he showed up with a present for me. And, um, actually, this week, I've been reorganizing and cleaning my apartment, and I actually found that present. <laughs> so I have a prop, which I'm actually going to be able to hand out to all of you. <laughs> <laughs> so, this is um, a box of latex gloves. They're not just any latex gloves. Because he was a firefighter and he worked in emergency response, they're special blue latex emergency response gloves. Um, and they say that um, you know they meet emergency medical examination requirements. So he showed up with this box of gloves. They're extra larges. Not an extra large by any means. But anyway, so, so Joe showed up with his box. And I don't really have a use for extra large blue latex gloves, so I'm going to share with the crowd. So, you know, if you want a memento of my oh, no one does. Come on, please. So, you know, I have my own box. You have your, okay, there you go. Okay, so that's side note number one. Um, side note number two is that if you never in your life have put your finger inside an orifice in someone else's body, and by orifice I mean mouth, pussy, vagina, um, anus, you know, the works, wherever you want to put it, um, you're really missing out on something. Because it's kind of awesome to feel someone else's 98.6. <laughs> I recommend this highly. So, those are my two side notes. The gloves, 98.6, highly recommended, put your finger in someone. <laughs> or start with your child. Okay, so back to Jeff. Um, so in my hour-long massage sessions, um, usually when I got to about 50 minutes, um, they, you know, the, for the first 50 minutes they would lay on their stomach on my massage table. I would do my thing. Um, I have no training massage, so I would just be like. Uh. <laughs> right. Um, so at 50 minutes, I would say, do you want to turn over? Which means it's hand job time. Um, and, and I always sort of felt like if I couldn't get him done, hand job complete, happy ending accomplished, out the door in those 10 minutes, I was not doing my job properly. 
But this time with Joe, when he came in the door with his box of gloves, I decided I'd been seeing him long enough that I would give him a little extra time. So I gave him more in the range of 15, 20 minutes. And so, you know, we roll him over and um, start to move my hands down, glove up with this giant glove. I actually also had my own smaller gloves. But one of the things about being a sex worker is sometimes you have to kind of pretend to be coy and like not be like, oh, yeah, I've totally put my fingers in the guy's ass before. So so I used his glove to make him feel better. So, so you know, I've, I've got my glove on and I'm starting to, to rub around the external region of the anus. And, um, you know, basically this, the thing that happens with, with newcomers to this experience is that they're really excited about it and then they get a finger in their ass and they're like, oh my god, that's huge, that's huge. He did not do that. <laughs> so Joe, I get one finger in and um, he says more and I, I slip two fingers in. So I get up to four fingers and he starts to really grind against me and he's saying more, more. And, and I'm like, I have, I have four fingers in you. And, and he says, there's more of your hand. <laughs> so, you know, I pull the glove up a little further. And, and I start to cross my thumb over. For those of you who have never fisted before, um, the key to it is that once you get to this wide part of your hand, that's where it gets kind of tricky. But you have to kind of cross your thumb over. That's the moment of reckoning when you decide to go in. <laughs> so I cross my thumb over, and I start to, to slide my hand in. And, and at this point, I'm thinking, this is going to be hard. And, like, he's, he's, he's going to want to stop. But instead of that, his ass, I, I swear, like, opened up and sucked my hand in. <laughs> it was like there was some supernatural force happening in his ass. And so, so suddenly I'm up past my wrist in this man's ass, which is a pretty incredible feeling. Um, so I, I was a little flabbergasted by this whole situation. And also I felt like we were running a little bit low on the lube. And, but the lube, fortunately by some miracle was in my reach, because when you've already got your hand on someone, and, and like something is over there, or like your phone's right here, you're kind of like... <laughs> so, so basically, I get my hand in his ass, and I make a fist, and I rub my knuckles against his prostate. For those of you that don't know, you don't actually need a whole fist to reach the prostate. Um, you, can, you can manipulate it um, externally by touching the per perineum, which is also known as the taint. Um, or you could just use one finger, Joe wanted a whole fist. So I, I get in there, and for the first time, his giant penis sprung to full action. And he was done in like a minute. This is the first time he had come in front of me, because um, he had never really been able to actually get it up before. So this is a pretty incredible thing. <laughs> so when we're done, I slowly disengage. And, um, you know, we had, we had a very lovely concluding minutes. He, he went and got a shower. And when, we, when he was leaving, he kind of, um, he gave me the shy smile and sort of looked down real quickly and, and then left. And I, I've always chosen to, to think of that moment as him just being coy and flirtatious and him not being ashamed. And I know in my head, I know, I know about men's sexualities and men's desires for anal sex or taboo and all that stuff. But I really want to believe that in that moment he was flirting with me and not being ashamed of what we had done. Yeah, that's my story. Thank you.